One of the most common types of patent search is a patent number search, where you have a number and you need to find the actual patent record that's identified by that number. Dialog has a search tool that will help you to find the patents that go with these numbers, regardless of whether the number is in a standard format or some variation that, depending on the source, may look really quite different. In this video, I'll show you how to access the Lookup Patent Number tool and how to use it. We'll look at some numbers from countries that have special number formatting issues and how Dialog helps you with that. And toward the end, I'll show you some of the different results that you may get depending on whether you search for your number in Lookup Patent as a publication or as an application, or if instead you use the Any button for a broader search. And we'll briefly look at how you can use command line to search for patent numbers for specific kinds of results. So let's get started. Let's start with how to find a patent using its number. We're logged into Dialog, and from the basic search screen, you can click the tile for patents, and you'll be in all 40 of our patent databases. You'll also see a brief description of each one here. Or, from any of the search modes, you can click on the Databases link up here to get the drop-down, which has two tabs. Click on Patents, and you'll see the full list of our patent databases that you can choose from individually or all at once. For this demonstration, we'll go into all 40 patent databases. Now, when you're in Patents, you'll have the choice of four interfaces. There's the usual Basic, Advanced, and Command Line, or you can click on Look Up Patent. And this has links for searching by inventor or by patent assignee, which we'll talk about later. But this is also the best dialog tool to search using a number. I'll put the patent number in here. I can use these buttons to limit the search to publication numbers, application numbers, or priority numbers. That last one would include a patent's application number, but sometimes the applicant will cite additional older applications as priority as well. Or if you're not sure what kind of number you've got, you can search for it as any number. Publication number would refer to either a published application number or a granted patent number, which is what we have here. Now we can put a space after the two letter country code or not. Some patent sources use commas and some don't, but in the dialog lookup patent tool, it doesn't matter. This tool will find it regardless. And because we're in all of the patent databases, initially I get eight results, but over here I can choose to see only one patent per family, which makes sense here, so I'll just use the newest ones. And now I have six results. The number search in Dialog's Lookup Patent Interface is very good at reformatting the numbers behind the scenes as needed to find the Dialog record that you're looking for. So not only can you include or not include the commas or spaces in a patent number, you can also search for numbers in a variety of formats that are really pretty different from what you see in the dialogue records. And yet you can use all those variant formats for searching. For example, let's say you are asked to find the patent for this number. And you may not even recognize what it is. So you can just enter the number as you have it choose any, and what you'll find is some records for what we now know, by the way, as Apple Pay. And the application number is displayed as US 2012636838, instead of the number 13 at the beginning, which is what the Patent Office calls the series number. Instead, the record puts the filing year 2012 at the beginning. Most electronic patent platforms would have a similar format for application numbers using the filing year, but in Dialog, you can put the alternate number format in and look up patent search will find it easily for you. And there are similar number formatting issues with application numbers from Italy, for example, which embed the name of the regional filing office in the number. Japan numbers are especially complicated because the Japan patent system assigns a different number to an application at each of three or four different stages, and each has a different number format. So without getting into too much detail, I can tell you that Dialog will automatically look for all the variations on a Japan number that you enter. 
So if I'm looking for this number, but I don't know what kind of number it is, I will get records that show this number for a patent about a device for detecting something about a yarn package, which shows this number very obviously. But we also get records for this patent about a solid state image pickup device, which has a similar number, but with zero fill after the eight, because that would be the format for a B2 document like this. And we get this patent about power equipment because the application number is another variation on the same number. In this case, the number starts with the Western year, 1996, in place of the eight. And that is because eight is the Japanese year equivalent of 1996. And some patent documents use the Japanese year, also called the year of the emperor. And this used to cause all kinds of difficulties for patent searchers. But when Dialog came out with this number finding product, all of those problems disappeared overnight because Dialog will do all versions of the search for you automatically. Another big example is WIPO application numbers, also called PCT numbers after the Patent Cooperation Treaty. These are formatted so many different ways in articles and on different platforms that it's impossible to say which one should be considered correct. They're all just different. But using this dialog tool, for example, I can do a search for this and it will find this record where dialog shows the number very differently. That's the country code, which is WO for the World Intellectual Property Organization, followed by the filing year, and then the two letter country code for where it was filed, which is BR for Brazil, followed by the application number without any zeros added. Again, this causes much frustration on other platforms, but by using the lookup patent interface, it's all handled automatically for you by dialog. And that's really all you need for patent number searching most of the time. But in this next segment, we'll look at a little more detail. I mentioned earlier that if you don't know whether your number is an application or publication number, you can just select any in lookup patent. But that can make a difference in your results compared to selecting application or publication specifically. In the lookup patent form, if we go to the number box and enter a patent number and select publication as the type of number, this will run as a PN search, which looks for our number as the main publication number. And so we get the record for the original patent granted in 1988. But if we select the any button, it will look for our number as either the main publication number or as a related publication. And so with any, we'll also get this 1992 patent, which was what's called a division of the original. And we get this 1999 patent, which was a continuation of the 1992 patent. Divisions and continuations are some of the ways that a patent owner might extend their rights to the original idea or some variation of it. And you see that the original 1988 number that we searched on appears in these later records as a related publication. So if you want to get these kinds of historically related patents, then use the any button. And ideally you'd want to search on the earliest number. The most common situation where selecting any might get you more hits than publication is if you're searching on a published application number. These are not the same thing as the original application number that you get when you file your application. This is the published version that's released by the patent office well before it being granted, usually about 18 months after filing in the US. These published applications, also called pre-grant publications or PGPs, are searchable as publication numbers, not as application numbers. And they have a very distinct number format. There's the publication year followed by seven digits using zeros if needed to fill it out to seven digits after the year. And if I search on this one as a publication, I get this record for the published application. But if I select any, I will also get the record for the granted patent, assuming there is one. 
because the granted record also shows the published application as a related publication. In the case of searching for an application number, if I select the application button, I'll get a search for the main application number, and I'll get any publication that came out as a direct result of that application, as we see here. But if I choose any, I might also get records where that number is a related application number or where it is cited as a priority, that is, a previous application that is also relied on. In this case, it's a difference between getting one hit in Inpadoc and getting 19 hits. For example, using any, we get this Argentina publication where the main application number is from Argentina, but it also cites the U.S. number that we searched on as a priority. Now, there are some searches where you'd want to do a number search using command line mode instead of look up patent. A good example is if you have a long list of numbers and you'd like to search for all of them at once. To do that, you can go to a command line window and run a search in the appropriate field, such as PN for publication number, and just list the numbers in parentheses with the OR connector in between. But as I've said, in general, the lookup patent form is the easiest and most effective way for you to find a patent using any of its numbers. And as always, if you need more information about how these searches work, it's recommended that you look at the pro sheet for the database that you're using. So that's it. I hope you will find that patent number searching on Dialog is both easy and very thorough. And I hope that the tips in this video may help you with the more unusual number searches that may come your way. Here are some links to additional resources. And if you'd like more information, or if you can use some help, feel free to call the help desk at these numbers or email us at customer at dialogue.com. Thanks for using Dialog and enjoy the rest of your day.